There's a lot of dust down the border track and a lot of different sorts of road conditions on the way to South Australia. But Milo 2 was built with that in mind. Let's take a look. You would have noticed over the years, um, I've always been a big fan of sticking the air filter as far away from the engine bay as I can get, usually up on the roof. Um, it's just common sense that thick particulates in dust will settle, you know. So if the thing's up on the roof, first thing I noticed between going from the mudguard, which was the original fitment on Milo, um, well, the original fitment was under the bonnet, but who wants to stick an air filter down in the dirtiest part of the world? So I had mine up here on the mudguard. <clears throat> the first thing I noticed was I was getting twice the life out of filters by shifting it to the roof. That's because of just the natural settling effect of dust. Plus you have these other advantages. You get cold air up there, you know, and anyone who's driven a diesel at night knows they go. They go really well. There's more oxygen in cold air. So, you know, I'm a roof guy. And this is the Donaldson. I love Donaldsons, made here in Australia. This is the Donaldson that uh, is on mustard, or was on mustard. Um, I pulled it off just so that we could fit it up to this truck uh, because I couldn't get hold of a good one. They still make Donaldsons, but they don't make this size out of steel anymore. And the ones they made, they're great. They're terrific things, but they just weren't going to suit the application I had. It looks pretty big, but I can live with it because it's doing the job. There will be no strain at all on this turbo, on this motor, through lack of air. To achieve that, we're going to have to pipe it up real fat. Pete's coming back for that. So it'll probably go, you know, five inch, four inch, three inch sort of thing. But that's all right, because if you think about it, by stepping it out, all we're doing is alleviating the pressure that you get from the pipe. You get the picture? <laughs> so all I need now, really, is a set of 44-inch tyres, and it'll balance the whole picture out, won't it? You know, building trucks, from the ground up especially, is quite often a case of one step forwards and two steps back. Um, I managed to scrounge up half a dozen split rims, and this is the worst of them, because I wanted to put it on splitties, you know? I wanted that classic 40 look on splitties. I like splitties, I grew up with splitties, I had them all on my tour trucks and everything else. But these splitties are too far gone. Look at this, back from the tyre service. And uh, yes, I went for Federals. Um, these are the Courage MTs, which are the tyres I've been testing on Milo. And um, Milo's done, since we fitted these tyres, uh, Sydney, South Australia, back through the bush. That was a bit of a, a wet trip. And then we did uh, Darwin and back, and that involved, you know, 8,000 k's of sealed roads, a couple of thousand dirt tracks, and then about 1,000 k's of really wet season mush up around the Adelaide River and all over there. You'll get to see that one of these days. How much better is this, hey? These are dynamic steel rims, yes. They're just beautiful, to be honest. Um, and of course, it means we can hump in with some wider rubber almost straight away. No issues at all with flat tyres caused by failure of the gear. Bung those Courageous, the feds, on these dynamic rims, and I reckon I've got a pretty pristine combination. Great rims, great tyres. No need to worry about the dust with that big air filter on the roof. Pretty soon, it's the end of the day, and it's time for us to set up camp on the edge of the border track. This is a lovely part of the day, isn't it? You know, just thinking about, what are we gonna do for dinner? What's that, mate? That's a new sweep. So we've developed on this track. Ooh. Paul's making sure nobody pinches his truck by sticking his swag right in front of it. Here we go, I think the dust is. You don't like it when your car's dirty, do you? No, nah, I don't. Now, there's not a lot of shops on the border track, and, you know, I sort of missed out on my big supermarket trip, so what you're about to see is what you can buy in garages along the way. Garage Tucker, Ruthie style. Okay, what we're going to cook tonight is chicken satay 
but it's not quite your normal chicken satay, it's garage chicken satay. We're not actually in a garage here, but we bought all the ingredients from one, and, and a butcher's shop, that was lucky, did well. So this is going to be pretty basic, this is what we could find, and somehow we've got to make it work. I love doing stuff like this. Start it going. Start it going. Oil. Uh, curry powder. Give it a big sprinkle. Big sprinkle. Go hard. I'll go home. Let me see you. No, more, more, more. That'll do. <laughs> you said big sprinkle. You ready? Go for it. Grab that. Cool. Puts out heaps of heat, this thing. Fair dig him. Awesome. It's a beast. Right, eh? Stand back. Cool. It's going to taste fantastic anyway. But it is garage tucker. Except for good chicken. You've got to have good meat. Hey, if you've got good meat, Couple of magic ingredients. Coconut milk. That quietened it down, didn't it? Just see how that goes. This is garage chili sauce, sweet chili. Okay, it's the nearest thing I've got. And I've got some chili flakes, so the combination should just work. We will see. I've put a fair bit of that in, in case you didn't notice probably about half the bottle. I'm going to put some oyster sauce in because I tasted the sweet chilli and it just needed a little bit of salt, you know, not much. A lot, a lot could do it some good. And oyster sauce will help the chicken too, it always does. Okay, and then our old mate, peanut butter. You betcha. How much? Oh, I don't know. Start with a lot. We're feeding a lot of people. You know, so a meal like this, it's all about um, getting maximum nutrition and flavour into a great big quantity that you carried in your truck all day. We've got the chilli flakes, so I'll put a few in now and I'll probably put a few in later. Was it good? Oh, beautiful. Great. Awesome. Love it. That's the four wheel <laughs> driving, not the tucker. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs>